Good evening and welcome to the July 13th meeting of the Parks, Recreation and Culture Board for the City of Beaver Creek. I hereby call this meeting to order and we'll begin with the roll call, please. Mrs. Fulcher? Here. Mrs. Heaton? Here. Mrs. Bidigari? Here. Um, Mrs. Meyer? Here. And Mr. Corbett? Here. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, before we get to our formal agenda tonight, uh, we as a board and staff wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, a longstanding former uh, Park Board member, uh, Dan Tips. And if you can see the screen here, um, Dan passed away last month, um, had served the Park Board loyally for 12 years, had been involved in many, many events, uh, levies, uh, promotion, uh, advocate, um, had done a lot to support the city, to support the parks, and, spe and specifically support the parks. So we want to take a moment tonight to remember Dan, and uh, we'll ask for a moment of silence to, to think about Dan and, and his contributions. Please join me. Thank you very much, um, Dan. Will be greatly missed. Um, you know, I think I think as time goes on, we'll realize the contributions that we'll, I'm sure there's so many things we're not even thinking about as we remember Dan. But as time goes on, we'll realize those, and uh, our thoughts go out to his family. All right, uh, moving on. In front of you, you have tonight's agenda. Um, I did have a motion to make one change and to add a report. Uh, on an update on the master plan. So I, I hear by motion we add that to the agenda as the uh, as item five above division report. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, and so the then I'd ask for a motion to approve the updated agenda. Motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, thanks Candy. And then um, the next order of business is the minutes. You have in front of you the minutes from our Tuesday, June 8th meeting. And once you've had a moment to look at those, if you haven't yet, uh, if you don't see any changes, I uh, will accept a motion to approve those minutes. Motion. Motion. Do we have a second? I second. All in favor of the minutes, say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Thank you all. And that brings us to that update on the uh, master plan. Kim, whenever you're ready. Good evening. Um, so at the last meeting, uh, one of the things that was asked is that we talk about the master plan. So um, this is, we're in kind of our second cycle of master plans. Our first one was done in 2009 went for 10 years, so in 2019 we did our second one. So this is just kind of a wrap up of kind of like what the new master plan looks like and um, I did include some of the things that we did um, for the first one. Um, if, uh, so again, so our first master plan was in 2009, Brandstead or Carroll was the consultants that we used. Um, both this one and the current one was uh, what we call a citizen driven plan, uh, meaning it is not something that the staff put together. It was all the things that um, the community came up with through focus group surveys, everything like that. So kind of um, all the recommendations that we got from our community and what the consultant put together is how we put together our plan for the 10 years. Um, so from 2009 to 19, uh, we replaced eight playgrounds, uh, renovated and expanded Lafino Plaza, resurfaced two tennis courts, repaired and replaced the skate park equipment. Uh, Beaver Creek Station was developed as a trailhead with a restroom building. And that restroom building is open um, all year round because it's heated and air conditioned. Um, we did some drainage improvements at Rotary Park. There, we did some accessible paths through Warringer Park. So if you've been out there, there's sidewalks connecting all the um, cabins and where the ba barn was and will be. Um, we did irrigation systems at 9-11 Memorial and Veterans Memorial. We did new lighting at Veterans Memorial, um, phase two, and actually we created phase two with the help of the Veterans Memorial Committee. Uh, various parks received trees, playground edging, lighting, and parking lot ceiling. 
Um, all park signs have been replaced. Um, as of yesterday, every single city of Beaver Creek Parks has the exact same entrance sign. It's really exciting, maybe just for me, but I'm, I'm really excited about it all, so yes. Um, not the current logo, but it's all this. <laughs> They're all, they all look the same, at least. Um, we did a connecting path uh, from Hunters Ridge to Rotary Park. Um, and the website was upgraded, and we're doing a lot more with the uh, use of social media. So, um, like I said, so that was our 10 years. Um, so now we bring us up to 2019. It was a citizen-driven plan. Uh, we did public workshops, stakeholder groups, surveys, um, and it was a statistically valid survey. Um, so we did a statistically valid survey. But then also we did, we had handout surveys at our events, at the Senior Center, at any of um, our facilities. So if Mr. Corbett didn't get the special right in like through the mail, he could still share his um, opinions with us. Uh, we were out at events doing dollar voting. Um, this was something new for our consultants. People came up and there was like, maybe like 10 boxes, um, and they were given like 100 bucks in Monopoly money, and then they just chose where they wanted to spend their money. So it just, it, I think it was helpful for like a resident, but like, I've got $100, like, ooh, wait a second. So um, that also, it was really kind of cool. And you're handing out money, you can't beat that. Um, and then we also did an online engagement, which is a mind mixer. So they put out a question, um, it's like, hey, what do you want to see in Beaver Creek? Like, oh, we want more playgrounds. Well with the online engagement, we're also able to do follow-ups. Like, well, what does that mean to you? Or we want better security in the parks. Well, what does that mean to you? Oh, it means better lighting. Oh, okay. And it was just more of a conversation online than you fill out a survey and we're not sure exactly some of the things that came out of that. So but that was really kind of neat as well. Um, so some of the key findings that came out of that was more and better connected trails, including unpaved trails, um, upgrades and maintenance to existing parks, more and better restrooms, more shade, improved marketing and communication, more concerts and community events, preservation of natural areas and open space, improvements to athletic fields and better utilization of existing fields. Um, so throughout the common theme and so one of the things that the consultants did, Brandstetter Carroll, they did our second one as well. Um, each park had its own like list of improvements. Um, so then that way, if we wanted to say, you know what, this year we just want to do all the, we just want to fix up Summerfield. There would be like maybe five or six different projects. So we could, or we say, all right, we're going to do one from here, one from here, one from here. So we could pick any park and there'd be like five or six things. Um, but some of the common themes throughout all of the projects and all the, um, the neighborhood parks, some of the larger parks, um, was a trail loop system, replace the playground, uh, more trees and landscaping, some type of neighborhood feature. Um, and that would come out when we do like our family recess or when we're out talking to um, that neighborhood. It's like, it's your park, what would you like to see? You know, something unique. Um, as we replace playgrounds, we are trying to make some type of unique feature. So there's not the same thing everywhere. Um, and then a half basketball court. So that would be something that we would work with the neighbors on because some people are like, oh, that'd be great. And some people are like, yeah, not in my park. So, so um, the rest of the, so what we do is we work on a five-year capital, capital improvement plan plan, if I can talk, um, and it's constantly rotating. So we started in 2020. Um, I'll say most of these we've done. Uh, so the first one was the Tobias Zimmer barn replacement. Um, Zach will talk about that a little bit when he talks about the park's goals. Um, but as everybody is aware, in 2019, it was blown over by a tornado. So we're working with insurance to get that rebuilt. So we're always one step closer. Um, we did an ADA assessment of all our parks. Um, so again, we used um, WT Group. Um, they came out and toured every single one of our parks and facilities and came up with a transition plan. So you'll see it in the next slide in 21 is putting that plan into place and um, what that looks like. It's an 11-year plan. So 
it's going to take a, a little bit. Um, Rotary Park Road, so again, that's already complete. That is repaving and redoing the Rotary Park from Dayton Xenia all the way to those back softball diamonds. So we're no longer losing cars or young children in the, in the potholes. So it's always a bonus. Um, Dominic Lafino Dock, um, the dock that we had was fantastic, but it was wood and just all the water just constantly, we were constantly trying to fix it. And um, so we have a composite wood dock now. I'm still ADA accessible. It moved down a little bit from the previous dock and it floats, is that correct? So it kind of moves with, uh, with the waves. Um, Lofino Center parking lot lights. Uh, so again, be on the other street, across the street from the senior center, uh, we received some land and we built a new parking lot. So we have ex um, extra parking lot sp spaces. And then we got a community development block grant um, to put lights up over there. So now that's all lit. Um, we replaced the bridge at CI Beaver Hall. Um, Grange Hall bike access is going to receive a walkway. Um, there's a new kiosk and a bike fix it station. Um, and then at Fifth Third Gateway, um, we put in a new kiosk and a bike fix it station. So that way, if you're on the bike path, something breaks down. Um, we're trying to get bike fix it at each of those. So. Um. So in 21, these are the projects that we had planned out. Uh, replace the playground at Grangeview Acres. Um, and I'm not going to give into details because I don't want to steal Zach's thunder. Um, some improvements at Bergolito Park, Summerfield Park, Dominic Lafino Park, Merrick Park, the Senior Center, and ADA improvements. Um, and again, so at the Senior Center, it's just basically replacing the HVAC units. It's not as exciting, but it needs to be done because I think they want heating and air over there. So, and the units are old so we're on a five-year replacement system for those so there's like 12 of them up there um, in 22 uh, we're going to be looking at again so every single year there's, there's going to be improvements for ADA so just constantly looking at the accessibility to the parks or the restrooms at the parks there's just constantly be um, improvements there um, we'll be doing a toddler pro, uh, toddler structure at Shout Park uh, Royal Point will see a brand new playground. We were at family recess early June, um, and so we had a lot of pictures and stuff like that for the neighborhood, and they were so excited, and so we got a lot of ideas, and so we'll start putting those into play um, later this fall or winter so we can put it back out to see how everybody likes it. So, um, And then again, the senior center, they'll get some equipment for the fitness room and heat and air conditioning. Um, in 23, um, again, ADA improvements. Walnut Grove will see some improvements. Gershbacher Park, Stafford, and Beaver Creek Station. Uh, in 24, Summerfield Park and ADA improvements. Um, so again, we have a certain amount of money that we spend on capital. So some years you'll see, depending on the improvements that we're going to do, you'll see more or less projects. Um, and in the future, there'll be some other things that we're going to be able to add in. I just can't um, add those in quite yet. So we're still putting some more ducks in a row. Um, in 25, this will be a biggie. So Dominic Lofino Park, their whole playground needs to be replaced. So I think that we'll have some um, improvements for EJ Nutter Park. I think that's just a, more of a trail system or finishing out their loop. But the big project will be Dominic Lofino Park and replacing that. Um, in 26, um, Hunters Ridge, the Senior Center, uh, Seville Farm Estates, EJ Nutter Park. Um, and again, um, I, Hunters Ridge will get, receive a playground, but the other ones will just see some type of um, improvement. Seville just received a playground. Um, that year, we're going to be looking at connecting the road to the playground. Um, so that's... As I was going through all this and trying to put this presentation, I'm hoping that's what you were looking for as far as just kind of an update for the master plan. Um, 
as we get through 21, we'll start adding, I think I ended on 26, so in 27. So it's just a constant rolling five-year plan. Um, and that's also something that we can share with you. Uh, we put that together so council receives it. Um, so I can make sure that that's part of like maybe the annual report or as we go through that. So you guys always see that, that five-year um, report. So happy to answer any questions if. I have a question. Yeah. Um, to get survey data, do you use QR codes like at different events? We have not, um, but this past year we started using QR codes more and more. Um, so on our shelters, like if somebody's up there and they're just like, you know, hanging out or having a family reunion, you can actually click on that QR code, which will bring you to our registration or our um, shelter reservation page. Um, so we're trying to get better at using the QR codes. Um, we do need to do some more research um, as far as surveys. Um, that was one of the things that came up in our accreditation. And so to be able to use a QR code where if you're at a playground, how do you like the playground? How do you use the playground? And they can just QR code and take the survey that way. So we have not, but that's something that's in the works. Okay, because um, I have done that before connected to WUFU and it collates all the survey data. I've and never heard of WUFU? WUFU. Oh. WUFU. <laughs> and it, uh. Well, anyways, it will, it will collate all your information for you and oh. you can export that in a spreadsheet or whatever you want to do. But um, I think it'd be a great idea if you have, like what you said, if you post this QR code for a survey and it's at all the parks and mm -hmm. then, um, you know, also if you're at different events like uh, the Popcorn Festival or whatever, and there's a booth, they could have the same QR code and people could just keep adding to that database. That would be fantastic. I may follow up with you on that one. Thank yeah, you. I'll add, there, there are a number of survey engines that have that as part of their offerings, right? State uses Qualtrics, and you create a survey, it'll produce a QR code for you at the end. Oh, okay, because we, we have survey monkeys. I, 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 I was thinking that. I haven't checked and see if that will do it, but it might. It's worth looking into. Yeah, or, I mean, yeah, if either of those other ones are yeah. free, too, so. It could be in that in touch also, so you could have that as a regular uh, item, and then people could always access it. And then it just keeps growing. That's a fantastic idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. that update, Kim. <clears throat> I look forward to the more detailed ones each year. And then, uh, Aaron, are you doing the division report? Me and then Zach. Okay. We do. I see. Cool. All right. Moving on to our division report. Um, starting off a little different this month, just sharing that July is Parks and Recreation Month. So we are participating in the campaign that the National Recreation and Parks Association puts together, which um, they always pick a theme for that year's Parks and Recreation Month campaign. And this year it's Our Park and Recreation Story. So if you follow our Facebook page, you may have seen a couple of posts um, about this and we're asking people to share their Parks and Rec story and um, use the hashtags, our Park and Rec story and also Beaver Creek Parks and Rec to share those with us. And if you like following along with hashtags and things, you'll be able to use those to see everything everyone else has shared, uh, both with Beaver Creek Parks and Rec and nationwide. Okay, so since it is July now, we're doing kind of a six month update on our goals. And so I apologize, there's a lot of text in some of these slides <laughs> and, um, to try and give you all the information that you might wanna know about. So we start with the Senior Center. We've got several goals to go through. One of the goals was to implement the C Silver Sneakers program. And that included training staff and volunteers on how to use the Tivity Health Portal to check member eligibility. So you might remember that we started the Silver Sneakers program actually in December of 2020. So by the time we get to 21, we we're already rolling, but most of our volunteers didn't know how to use it to help people, members who are interested in seeing if they could sign up. But they now do. Now that we're kind of open pretty much at full capacity at the Senior Center, most of our volunteers are back and they've had a chance to do this. And every month we see those Silver Sneakers memberships 
increase. So we currently have 251 people who are Silver Sneakers memberships. And you may recall that anytime someone who has a Silver Sneakers membership comes in and scans into the center, we actually get reimbursed for their visit, um, each of those visits. So they get a f their membership fee is waived, that $35 a year if you're a resident, but we actually get reimbursed if you come regularly, you can actually make much more than $35 a year. So it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, we were asked to identify potential grant funding for the Senior Center and capital improvement projects. This is, I put complete and ongoing. Uh, we do have a list, but um, we will continue to add to that list as we go forward. We do have a document that's been created with grants that are open to kind of anything we do in Parks and Rec, as well as senior specific grants. Um, and it, and it um, has included, you know, due dates and grant periods and, and that kind of things as well. So we'll continue to update that and utilize that as we look for future funding opportunities. Another goal was to develop and administer a community survey to assist with the development of the five-year plan for the Senior Center. So Kim had just shared the five-year capital improvement plan. We've been working on those for the Senior Center specifically, for recreation specifically. And uh, we kind of fallen out of that habit over with the Senior Center and recreation in particular. It's hard to keep up with sometimes when you start to get behind on those. So we did do a survey uh, with our Senior Center and with anyone who wanted to take it. It was administered in April and we have started creating additional goals for our five-year plan. Of course, we use our master plan for that, but the master plan doesn't focus specifically, you know, drill, drilling down on specifics for the senior centers. So we wanted something even more specific to the programs, events, and services that we're able to offer there. So we'll be using that as we figure out what to offer in the near future. Okay, another goal was to improve marketing of senior center programs and classes and explore rebranding to potentially reach a younger demographic of seniors at the community. Uh, we have uh, increased our marketing efforts and our survey showed us that rebranding wasn't really something that our members were interested in. Uh, so we won't be pursu pursuing that, any sort of name change or anything like that at this time. Uh, but we have had some new flyers created. Our new communications manager with the city has been helping us with different um, videos and brochures and flyers and our um, presence at different events. We attended, the fire department had an open house two nights actually of open houses in May, I believe. We attended those and we're looking for additional, you know, community events that we can be a part of that traditionally the Senior Center hasn't set up a booth at, but it is a great community resource that a lot of people want to learn about. So we'll continue with those efforts. Okay, oh, I kind of moved into this one already. Attend at least three networking events to market the Senior Center. So we're in progress. We attended the two open houses for EMS week. Um, we're presenting to a HIPAA, a HIPAA residents in July, and then um, we'll also have some staff who are attending OPRA conferences this fall. We've also got a couple other things in the works that we just keep learning about as people keep having some more in-person events scheduled this year. Okay. Assist in the development of a cost recovery policy and define cost recovery goals for senior center programs, activities, and events. This is in progress. Our senior advisory board met last month and completed a beneficiary of service exercise that our park board is familiar with that, they, that you all completed as well. So um, they're looking forward to their next steps, kind of hearing how that went. Compo you know, staff is meeting tomorrow <laughs> to kind of uh, compile what we got from our different stakeholder groups in that exercise and start moving forward. Okay. To give us a break from the goals, I do want to feature a few upcoming <laughs> events at the Senior Center. So coming up at the end of the month on the 30th, we're having a Senior Center garage sale. If you have participated in our garage sale in the past, we're changing things up a little bit this year. I know sometimes change makes people uncomfortable, but we're excited. We think it'll be fun. Um, <laughs> this will be in the Senior Center overflow parking lot instead of actually in our Senior Center. And um, if you'd like to participate, call up the center and you can get a two parking spaces 
in our overflow lot. So you can either set that whole area up with your things that you want to sell, or you can park your car in one space and set up a table next to you. We'll give you a table and then you can sell your items right then and there. And it's a great spot to have, you know, more traffic and we'll do the marketing for you than if you were doing it at your own home. So we're looking forward to seeing how that goes. I noticed some of our senior board members started taking notes when you pulled that. <laughs> <laughs> not mentioning any names. He's not looking around. <laughs> But I think, but I think they're staring at me now. <laughs> all right. Um, one of our absolutely <laughs> favorite events all year long is the corn roast. And, you know, we didn't have the, uh, the corn roast was a drive through last year. So we're excited to get together and do the corn roast this year back like we used to do all together in the great room. So we want to thank Homestead Village as our sponsor. They're gonna provide ribs, hot dogs, chips, and dessert. And then we do have a generous anonymous donor at the Senior Center who will be providing the corn on the cob. And that is always a good time, good food, fun day. Make sure you call in advance to get your, get your tickets. Oh no, Kim, I forgot about the rule. I messed it up. I'm good. I got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving away from the senior center side into the re general recreation side. And I put numbers on these ones so we can know how far we've got a little bit. Goal number one uh, is to partner with Beaver Creek City Schools and it's really to expand that partnership with Beaver Creek City Schools for our summer camp program. And we have done that. As you're aware, last year we weren't able to use the schools for our camp program due to COVID restrictions. But this year we're back at Fairbrook Elementary School and we're so thankful for that partnership. It's a fantastic facility, great staff to work with, and wonderful school grounds that back up to Fox Run Park. So the outdoor space is, is phenomenal there for our campers. Okay, the next one is expand part relationships between the park board and partner groups. And I said pending. <laughs> Because this is a great reminder for our park board that this is something that we had in the goals for um, for park board and we I don't think we've really talked about it much lately although we've been working on talking about volunteer recognition which is part of that so you might remember that right before COVID happened we were working on visiting with our partner groups and reaching out to them and it all came to a screeching halt so maybe time to start looking back at that. Okay, goal number three, complete cost recovery policy and define cost recovery goals for recreation programs and facilities. This is something I know um, staff is really excited about, being able to eventually have a finalized cost recovery plan with cost recovery goals. And it's in progress. You know, senior advisory board's working on it, park board's working on it, staff is working on it. Just takes a little while to get there. Okay, you might notice some overlap in some of the divisions here and some of these goals. But create a list of grant opportunities for recreation programs. Again, complete and ongoing. We've got a small list that we're continuing to grow. Okay, one of the things that came up specifically in our master plan was expanding cultural arts programming. And this has been an interest of, you know, various volunteers and park board members in the past as well. And we are in progress. So we actually added two new cultural events this year. One was our new um, social swing dance that we had on June 26th it, with our partners in Voodoo Swing. And we held that out, out at Dominic Lafino Park and had quite a crowd, um, upwards of 150 people out at the dance and live band and smashing, smashing success. So that was really fun to be able to partner uh, with Voodoo Swing On, who've been long term, long time partners, you know, teaching our dance classes. And we were able to open this up to the public, this opportunity, and people really had a lot of fun. And then we have a new children's concert coming up on July 18th. So our popular summer concert series, we kind of tagged this one onto it. We'll have the children's concert with Jim McCutcheon on the 18th at five o'clock. And then at seven o'clock, we'll have our 
regular <laughs> concert uh, with Jim McCutcheon as well. He's a very versatile musician and plays to a wide variety of audiences. So he will have a different set list for each concert. Uh, for everyone to enjoy. We'll have some food trucks and some uh, giant games and things like that out there in between. So if you want to stick around for both, that'll be a fun time. Okay, it looks like my slide got cut off a little bit here, so I apologize for that. But I did want to highlight a few of the events that have been going on because as you're aware, it's July, and while we're always working towards our goals, we're also quite busy doing lots of events. So I want to thank our sponsors for the 4th of July. There's a list of uh, most of our sponsors here. It would not be possible to put on our 4th of July celebration, the parade, the fireworks, all of it, without the support of our generous sponsors. And it's wonderful to be working in a um, community with such community support. A couple upcoming events. We have our family recess. And I know this is a little small to read. The next family recess event is tomorrow night out at Fox Run Park. If any park board members want to come out, it's not too late to RSVP and help with that. Uh, but these have been great fun. We want to thank City Barbecue and International Harvester Credit Union for their support. We will have um, pulled pork sandwiches while supplies last. They've been going quickly. And we'll have uh, plenty of Italian ice for everyone, as, as well as games and activities for all ages and an opportunity to learn about what's going on in your park, see some of the improvements to Fox Run Park and all of that good stuff. So we're looking forward to that. Looks like the weather is going to be beautiful. It's from 5.30 to 7.30. And then the last one will be a week from tomorrow, and that's out at Summerfield Park. So we are looking forward to both of those events. Our summer concert series continues with our children's concert that I just talked about. Um, on Sunday, we'll have some lawn games and food trucks and the children's concerts at 5 with our concert for any age at 7. And then we have our movie night coming up on Friday, August 6th. This is um, going to be Raya and the Last Dragon. It's a pretty new movie that has recently come out. So if you haven't seen it yet, or even if you have, still come out and see a movie on the big screen outside. Uh, we will have uh, popcorn and food trucks and some family fun starting at 7. And then at dusk, the movie will start. That's usually somewhere between 8.30 and 9, depending on whether it's a clear night or cloudy or what's going on with the weather. Looks like the next slide is going to be Zach's. So does anyone have questions about our goals or upcoming events at the Senior Center? I have a question. Yeah. You mentioned the group partners and the board. <laughs> Could you <laughs> explain what that's about? Yes, I can. Eric, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I'd be happy to, and anybody else can add to that. Yeah. So it was kind of part of that volunteer recognition yeah. conversation, right? Is there a better way for us to interact with some of these partner groups to encourage them to help us gather volunteer information initially, but but it's broader than that, right? It's it's really becoming maybe networking better with them so that we're kind of sharing information back and forth. Um, so we developed a rough schedule for a park board member or a pair of park board members to visit the monthly meeting of these partner groups just to share a little bit about what's going on with the park give them an opportunity to give us feedback on the volunteer program or anything else that they'd like to just to kind of more formally recognize the relationship and yeah create a better connection between those partner groups and uh, parks recreation culture as a whole um not that there's a bad rep um relationship anywhere it's just just kind of further building that connection so yeah so i think we did a few of them i'm sorry we did we did do a few of the the visits mm -hmm. and then it got shut down yeah. mm -hmm. and so we probably need that list again and divide it up again yeah yeah i added that to old business Good for you. <laughs> oh. so we'll talk about yeah. that in a and, I, and i'll share a, some of that <laughs> i think also stem not only from volunteers but also when we did the master plan process yeah. mm -hmm. and the consultant met with a lot of the focus groups who said they wanted increased communication and education about their resources with the parks department you know right. a lot of groups that utilize the parks and our facilities. Right. 
Is, you know, because really there's no, there's not that I'm aware of, uh, anything in place for regular communication. It's if, some, if we need something or something happens, yes. But one of the work sessions, um, there was a great conversation about the use of um, Ankeny Park and, the, and potential for some things in the future that could benefit a broader group of people. Well, I, I don't know if that conversation would have started if we hadn't been in the same room talking about the master plan. So, you know, it's an opportunity to generate more of those conversations and just mm -hmm. through a more purposeful communication. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Aaron. So Zach doing the park report next. He sure is. All right. All, you. All right. Good evening. All right. I've got quite a few goals to share with you and a lot of great updates. So um, as we get going right into this, um, you know, we, we set a lot of ambitious goals for the year in parks and it's kind of cool to always kind of check in and see where we're at. and. At times it seems like you're just spinning your wheels and not going anywhere, but we get a lot of stuff done. And I think you saw that when in Aaron's presentation with the Senior Center and Recreation, we've accomplished a lot already halfway through this year. Uh, so our first goal is to install a new playground at Grangeview Acres Park. Uh, this is nearing completion. This photo was taken yesterday, um, even though it was a cloudy, disgusting day outside. Um, they're close to being done. Uh, their goal was to have this um, playground completed last week. Obviously, with the, the weather we've had, it's delayed them this week, certainly not helping, but I know they were working on uh, getting playground mulch delivered today and installed. Uh, their goal is hopefully, if weather cooperates, to have this playground finished by the end of this week. Once they are complete and the new playground is in and opened up for play, our staff will return, remove the old playground, um, and then we'll be doing some other small features like adding in uh, sidewalk access from uh, the one cul-de-sac to the playground. Uh, second goal was to replace the pedestrian bridge at Dominic Lefino Park. It was starting to show its age, and uh, we budgeted for that to be replaced this year. Uh, so back in, I believe it was March, that was completed by our contractor. Uh, the bridge was widened, so it's a little bit wider for people to pass if you have a stroller or double stroller, um, as well as our utility cart that we keep out at Lefino Park can now all cross this bridge. We don't have to go all the way around just to get to the other side of the the little creek crossing there. Uh, and the one great thing is this uh, bridge is all made of composite decking, so that decking material will last a heck of a lot longer. Uh, with the cost of lumber this year, composite and treated lumber are almost the same price. So it's a great opportunity to go with composite. Uh, the third goal is to replace the Tobias Zimmer barn at Wardinger Park. And as Kim touched on this earlier, um, this is something that's been ongoing for quite some time. We're just trying to work out all the details with our contractors and with right now with our insurance company. Um, we're nearing the hopefully the end of that process and be able to start construction sometime soon. Um, again, it's just been ongoing. It seems like one thing after another. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of progress on site, but we're doing a whole lot of work on the back side of things just to get this project up and going. Uh, fourth goal is to create hiking trails at Cinnamon Ridge Park. And again, this the screenshot here is of a map out of the master plan. Uh, we're looking to start the planning process this fall, work with the community uh, to, t to work with them and see what they want as far as a trail system back within that community. Um, so one of the challenges we have a lot of times is when you create trails behind single family residential neighborhoods, there's some concern of now people walking in what is my backyard where I'm not used to seeing people. Now I have people back there. So we certainly want to work with the community and the neighborhood to make sure that we're communicating well with them um, and putting in a trail system that's going to be used and then well received by that neighborhood. Um, there are some trails in there now. Uh, I walked them maybe about two months ago. They don't really go anywhere. Some of them start to kind of fade out and kind of get lost. Um, but there is a paved connector path that does connect um, uh, two of the roads there. And, and so we will add some additional trail and um, access both uh, maybe some gravel and natural dirt surface trails. How long is that trail going to be? Uh, if you, the kind of the, with the map, if I go back, if you look at this map, I think that's just around a mile if you do the full loop. Um, Granted, it, it depends how far we take that 
you know, out into the, the left side of that map if we want to go all the way to the edge. Um, certainly there could be some smaller loops in there, but I think you can get it roughly a mile worth of walking trail back in that property. Cinnamon Ridge is off of Willow Run Road, so it's on the south part of town, uh, southwest part of town. Uh, Willow Run comes into County Line Road and Shaker Town. Oh. Goal five was to complete the process of accreditation for CAPRA, or the Commission for Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies. This was a huge uh, task for our staff, uh, Park Board included. Um, I know we went through a lot of this last fall, uh, we had our virtual site visit in April, March, April, um, and we are just now kind of waiting the hearing, which will be in September. So, uh, fingers crossed, everything goes smooth for that. Once uh, we have the national conference in September, we should become an accredited agency. So, this is it's in process, but uh, for the most part, it's complete. Sixth goal is to work with the Beaver Creek Wetlands Association to complete phase one of the Spotted Turtle Trail. Uh, and this is in progress and there's been quite a bit of work and development in this project lately. Uh, if you've been out to Rotary Park, you will see uh, some of the development of the new trailhead. Uh, you'll see this is the mock-up of the trailhead sign. So the, the sign, is, the frame is there and all of the stonework is there and the graphic panels that you see here have been ordered. Um, our contractor has also started uh, building an observation deck. Um, it's a, about a 25 foot by 25 foot size deck. Um, again, it will be all built out of composite decking. Um, he has all of the supports in now and the decking material has been delivered and should be installed over the next week or so. Um, we have another contractor that is working who has uh, killed off all of, the, of a two acre area worth of prairie. Um, that's going to be seeded this winter. So. Um, over the next couple of years, it takes a couple of years to establish that native prairie mix, um, but you will see that um, all developed. Um, and also to kind of wrap up that project, the small parking lot at Rotary Park that's back near the shelter is going to be repaved, and there's going to be about uh, 250 feet worth of paved access from the sidewalk to the observation deck. So there's going to be a lot of great development when this is complete. The Wetlands Association is looking to have a ribbon cutting event sometime around the end of August. So all of our work will be completed minus the seating of the prairie um, by the end of August. And they'll be able to showcase not only what we've done here at Rotary Park, but all of the work that they're doing back within the Spotted Turtle Trail that includes, I think, over a half mile of new boardwalk and some observation towers. And there's quite a bit of work. So I know they're pretty excited to show that off. Seventh goal was to replace 12 additional dugouts at Rotary Park with revenue generated from our field user fee that we implemented last year. Um, this may need to be modified. Um, this would typically be a project that would be completed in you know, the fall, fourth quarter of the year. Um, but we've had a, a decrease in the number of weekend tournaments. And so typically when we'd have you know, 50 teams or so, we're having you know, around 20. So the, the, f the fields have not been used as much on the weekends. It's a trend that we're seeing with some of the small to medium size tournament directors. Uh, they're seeing some decrease in some of their uh, weekend tournaments, and a lot of them are going to the big state level tournaments in like Columbus. So it's certainly a trend that we're seeing, but because we're having less tournaments uh, on the weekends, we're having less revenue generated from this field user fee. Um, but whatever money we do bring in, uh, we'll go back into the fields uh, for uh, dugout replacement. We just may not be replacing 12. Eighth goal is to generate internal weekly task reports for all of our staff members. Um, this is something that is complete and ongoing indefinitely. Uh, we send out these weekly updates every Monday. Uh, just a brief rundown of what's going on within Parks and Recreation so all of our staff members know what's going on. So everyone from our you know, senior center coordinator to our Parks Maintenance staff, everybody has an idea of what's going on for the week um, within Parks, Recreation, Senior Center. Uh, and even our cemetery division that, w that parks oversees. And uh, a nice cool feature we've been doing is sharing a photo each week of some cool things going on, whether that's a 4th of July, uh, a maintenance project that's ongoing, um, some, some fun event at the Senior Center. It's great just to share some of the great things we're doing with our own staff. The ninth goal is to begin uh, some of the ADA 
uh, transition plan. Again, this is in process. Uh, we just received some new picnic tables, two of which are ADA accessible, which will be going out to some of our shelters. Um, we're working with a contractor um, to start doing some small improvements like leveling some of the grade of sidewalks um, just to get those to grade. Um, also working on adjusting grab bar heights, uh, toilet paper dispensers, mirrors, some of the easier uh, fixes, you know, some of them may just be moving a grab bar down an inch, it might be an inch too high, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but for those who are impacted, it is a big deal. So um, this plan has, like Kim said, it's an 11 year plan. Uh, we're starting with some of those smaller uh, projects and then we'll work towards some of the bigger, higher dollar projects in the coming years. The 10th goal is to create a volunteer project list for community organizations, Eagle Scouts and Girl Scouts. Um, this is an ongoing list that um, Kim and I update pretty regularly. We go out once a month, tour the parks, and as we go around, if we see ideas that uh, would be great volunteer project ideas, we add it to the list. And we've also started doing a better job of tracking our volunteer projects and hours and, and total number of volunteers that we have uh, within our parks. Um, goal 11 is to train our staff more in depth with Asset Essentials, which is our work order management software and utilize the cost center feature. So our staff has been receiving these work orders for the last several years. We're really working with them to start um, inputting more information into their work orders as they're completed, um, adding in labor information, uh, tracking um, the work orders with completion with photos, um, how long it took them, the equipment they used, and it gives us a better idea of how uh, much money we're spending on certain tasks. And we can start running some pretty detailed reports to get some neat information. Twelfth goal is to plant one acre of wildflower pollinator area. Again, this is in process. Um, we were hoping to have an acre of wildflower area planted at Fifth Third Gateway with some parking lot improvements that we're making. But we're also going to be planting two acres of wildflower pollinator area uh, at Rotary Park in conjunction with the uh, Spotted Turtle Trail project. And finally, I believe this is our last goal, is to have uh, 30 trees planted within various parks this fall. Um, again, that'll be picked up in the fourth quarter. Usually sometime around November is when we like to plant all of our trees. And just a little bit of update of what's going on. I know last month we talked briefly about mowing within our parks. Uh, and it seems like the rain doesn't want to let up this year and the mowing just hasn't slowed down for our staff. They're still out there working hard mowing, but we've also picked up um, a contract mower, Groundskeeper Landscape Group, who we are currently using this year uh, for mowing cemeteries and they did all of our landscape bed maintenance within uh, some of the right-of-way areas. They're also starting to mow some of our parks and facilities. So a um, place like City Hall, the police station, the senior center, some of the uh, bike hubs, um, basically the, the parks that are more green spaces that don't have playgrounds, like Terra Park, um, the large field at Summerfield or Stafford Park. So we still want our staff into the parks where we have playgrounds and shelters and trash cans, um, but we're, we're trying out our contract mowing company uh, to help us out and just take some time off of our staff so we can get around to the parks a little bit sooner and get caught up on some projects. Uh, we also completed a, the parking lot at Fox Run Park. So this was just completed uh, the other day. Um, it's a gravel parking lot with a concrete apron. apron. You see our, our staff pouring here. There's parking for approximately eight vehicles. Um, again, there's about a one mile walking loop trail there. It's a great nature park, um, but there's no off street parking. Uh, there previously wasn't. Um, so I know the neighbors will be pleased that there'll be cars that have a parking lot and they're not parking at the end of their driveway and turning around in their driveway. So that was completed by our staff uh, just last week. And again, if you have, uh, have the ability, please come out uh, tomorrow night to Fox Run Park for family recess from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, Girl Scout Troop 33341 recently completed this really neat project of a puzzle and game exchange. So this is similar to the little free libraries that you see scattered throughout uh, our community. This is an uh, exchange for puzzles and games. And this is installed at Shout Park right off the shelter. Um, I thought it was a really neat project and uh, they were pretty excited to have it completed. Uh, and I really hope the community enjoys having this out there. So another really neat amenity to our parks. And just an update on some of the projects coming up. Uh, again, we're going to be starting the parking lot improvements at Fifth Third Gateway. So a good portion of that parking lot is paved, but there's also some 
uh, overflow parking that is gravel that just was kind of messy. Um, we we're gonna make more of a defined edge of a gravel parking lot. And then uh, it, it was really too large. We're gonna, we have some dirt that we've had unloaded there. We'll spread the dirt and plant wildflowers in the surrounding area, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner right off of Creekside Trail. Uh, and we'll also begin some bridge work at Stafford Park and Merrick Park. Uh, there are two bridges at Stafford Park that'll be receiving some work. One will be replaced closest to the playground. Uh, there's another bridge further down near a connector path that will just be repaired. And then at Merrick Park, we're gonna be making some upgrades um, to that bridge so that it's more accessible with bikes and um, uh, uh, strollers. And then finally, we'll be working on installing a concrete pad and picnic area um, and bike fix-it station at Grange Hall Bike Access. So I know that was a lot, um, but if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Zach. Whew, you're right, that's a lot of information tonight. That's great. Um, moving into old business, um, so as Aaron pointed out, there's a goal, goal number two, that mm -hmm. It needs some work, but to quote Zach regarding the Tyus Zimmer barn, while you don't see much happening on the front lines, there's a lot going on in the background. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I, uh, you know, we've got another work session scheduled for our meeting in August that will um, be pretty much dominated by the next phase of our volunteer recognition conversation, but I added that to the agenda list um, that uh, if we have time, we can talk about kind of moving forward. Meanwhile, um, I, I don't, I'm sure I've got the list somewhere, maybe, maybe. as a board or staff, we can kind of see who's got that previous list and get that out and kind of as Moment's a starting positive. point. Uh, we have it. It's probably um, an email too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I can reassign. So that's not a problem. Okay. Thank you. And then you know, just a little bit more regarding old business uh, and our work session today, we made significant progress on a, a new plan that we'll be sharing soon uh, regarding volunteer recognition um, for the remainder of this year and, and really kicking in in the uh, 2022. So I'm pretty excited about the conversation today. Also pretty excited about having everybody here, um, whether it's illness or transition or a pandemic. Um, we haven't had a full house in a long time, so I'm, I'm excited about that and thankful that everyone can be here tonight. Uh, any other old business anyone can think of? Anything else you need to call us out on over there? No. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Always looking to improve us. Um, so then new business, and uh, I know uh, Aaron had already mentioned the upcoming family recesses as volunteer opportunities. Anything else out there? that we or the community watching can uh, sign up for. Yeah, besides family recess tomorrow and the following one, in fact, I think Cecilia and Sharon are signed up for the one at Summerfield Park next week. The 21st, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so there's a reminder in case you forgot. I did not forget. <laughs> um, but also our movie in the park, um, we'll have a booth at, at all three of those events. Oh, we'll six. have a table, you know, with information and a chance to interface with the public. And so it's always helpful if anyone wants to help us out, you know, have somebody at that booth getting feedback. Um, sometimes we have fun things like raffle prizes and things that we can try to get people to enter for and be a fun night. Great. Plus you might get some free popcorn. Right, and that was August 6th? That's Friday, August 6th yep. at Dominic Lafino Park. Mm -hmm. 7 p.m. is when all the fun starts. Great. Thank you. Then, uh, I'm sorry, Eric. Can I? Yeah, please. Um, so we always talk about like volunteer events at the event, volunteer opportunities at events when we get to this portion of the agenda. Um, Zach always talks about um, volunteer groups helping out at our right. parks throughout the year. So um, again, it doesn't have to be a business. It doesn't have to be a one Eagle Scout. So if the National Honor Society, if like the football team, if there's um, teams out there or groups within the high school or businesses that need volunteer opportunities or they just want to give back, um, contact us. There's always a need. Um, and it's really helpful if you, in, yeah, you can contact us right up there. Um, if you really enjoy like mulching and pulling weeds. Um, 
unfortunately, that's kind of the biggest need we have right now, but there's also some other things that uh, need done. So um, I want to put that out there Great. as well, too. So if you're saying like, oh, man, I need all these volunteer hours, call your local parks department. <laughs> we can get you all the volunteer hours you need. So Great. Thank you. All right, moving on to unscheduled visitors. We have... Uh, for the 27th consecutive board meeting, we have none. No, I'm just kidding. We did have one like last year or year, right before the pandemic. Yeah. They meant to be at a different meeting, but they came here. It's okay. Uh, we did, somebody was asking about um, astronomy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. that's right. You got me. I got it. That's right. Got but it unfortunately, no astronomers tonight. No. Which brings us to action items. Um, you know, we've talked already about um, some items that we need to have prepared or bring with us for our work session next week and uh, getting back on track with goal number two. Um, anything else in action items that anyone else can think of? Okay. Which leads us to finally to board time. And just to show that I didn't forget you, Candy, do you have anything you'd like to share for board time first? All right, Cecilia. I don't really have anything to share in particular, but I am always in awe of all the things that these folks do for parks, recreation, and culture Amen. with the number of people who work in this department and what output they have. It's pretty amazing. Agreed. Thank you. Sharon? Yeah, I just wanted to say you know thank you for all of those that came out and had such a good time at our fourth of july the parade and the fireworks and the food trucks it was a great show of our community and the support that you gave us um so much fun and thank you again to all of our volunteers very very important thank you christina my daughter and i are making the rounds as we always do to all the parks in beaver creek and we're really enjoying um, all of the amenities, you know, the, the trails, the, the swing sets, the playground equipment. Um, it's just, it's so much fun and it's so neat to see from visit to visit what she can do and what she enjoys because it's always different. So thank you for all that you guys have put into the play equipment and how um, it can just grow with, with anyone's, with any kid's age or, you know, even adult, you know, it, it's, it's great. So we're having a lot of fun doing that. So thank you for everything. Awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, I'll kind of add to those, um, you know, first, as Sharon said, thank you to everyone involved in the 4th of July event, the, the committee, the staff, volunteers, sponsors, um, you know, it's one event for sure that the community comes out for and, um, uh, it's great as usual um two i was fortunate to be at the family resource at Vergalito park a couple weeks ago had a great time we had an, another great turnout so um two for two right and hopefully the next two go just as well uh, um sorry i looked over here like you were there it was i'm thinking of shauna who was standing on my left during the during the family resource uh, recess um you know, a lot of folks come out, a lot of folks happy to share their thoughts. Kyle and Chandler did a great job interacting. And food was gone like that. So I know to get food first next time before I start interacting with people. Um, but related to what uh, Christina was saying, and this is, I'm sure this isn't a new idea. Maybe you've done it. It seems like I remember doing something with birds a few years ago. But, you know, a passport program, something like the, and even the collaborative thing that the region did back in the winter or spring i had a lot of folks a lot yeah it was yeah but a lot of folks maybe meaning a half dozen which is a lot at, at family recess talked about yeah we're trying to hit all the parks this summer right so and maybe some incentive to have people do that i think that's a great summer activity for those with with kids and you know we took our one-year-old judah to the Virgilito park last week and he he's one he just started walking two weeks so he had a great time on all that stuff right so that's something I wouldn't mind doing now that I have a grandchild. Um, but maybe it's an incentive, and I, it's probably not a new idea, but it, it hit me. It reminded me of the, the one regional event that, that you guys shared at one of the meetings. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I've got. All right, so anything else before we adjourn? No. 
If not, then I will accept a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Being adjourned. <laughs>